Right, hello and welcome to the Hangout Sessions. I'm Christian and today I'm joined by Louis, Shane and Bates and we're here to discuss the Champions League draw. Guys, are we excited about the draw? Very excited. Yeah, Buzzing. Right, yeah. So, uh, so, right, well, I think we'll, we'll just dive straight, straight in with it. So we'll go to uh, Group A. Bates, talk me, through, talk me through this group. What, what are your thoughts initially looking at that group? We've got, obviously got Man United. They're the, uh, the, main, the main team in this group. But uh, do you think they're going to struggle at all? Or are they going to eat I'm through? looking at Man United walk in the group. Probably couldn't, couldn't ask for a better group from, from second, really. Um, I mean, CSKA, obviously, like, you know, for fourth place, Basel, Benfica. I mean, really, looking at how United have started the season, how they strengthened, then they should just walk it, really. No one wants to travel to, to Moscow or, you know, any point during the season for, for travel, but they've got a deep squad now like they, they haven't had for the last couple of seasons. Um, Benfica and Basel both did well in their leagues, but at the same time, it's like the Swiss leagues just not relevant is it to be fair uh, I think Porto Porto like were just a close second behind Benfica but you're really talking about Man United looking like the best team in the Premier League so they should have absolutely no trouble yeah Shane Louis any thoughts no I totally agree with Bates there I'm just checking you'd mentioned the traveling as well Moss uh, CSKA are hosting United on the 27th I've checked their fixtures uh the 23rd, so the Saturday, they've got Southampton away. And then the next game, which is on the Saturday again, they've got Crystal Palace at home. So it's not like they're it's even going to need anything massive. It's not like they're playing like Liverpool or, or Man City or anything. They've got quite easy fixtures around that. What, That's um, going to be their only stumbling block, you know. But month? I don't see any problems. What month? Uh, that is September, sorry. Yeah, so at very end of September, 27th. Nice and early in the season then, really. So it should be pretty Yeah, yeah, everyone's gonna be fit. Yeah, everyone's gonna be fit, healthy. Yeah. I don't see any problems. They're gonna walk that group. Yeah. yeah. Well, Louis, who do you reckon is gonna come second then if we reckon Man United are gonna to top it? Who's gonna be there? Uh, yeah, so I agree with Bates. I think Manuel absolutely walked the group easy. Um I think Benfica for second, um, Bao for third, and I think Moscow uh definitely finished fourth. I can barely see Manu dropping any points in this group. Uh, it's a pretty easy group for them. Um, the likes of obviously Benfica and Bao, obviously the champions as well. Bao actually won their eighth consecutive title, uh, but that so to me that says that league's obviously not really a challenge for them. So Champions League's a different kettle of fish, and uh, I think they'll get Europa League. But Manu and Benfica for me, and with Manu dominating the group. Yeah, well, I think that's uh, I think that's probably what most people are thinking. So yeah, I I I, I agree with you guys again. I still think Man United. Uh, are the clear favourites for that group. I think really it could be any one of those three. I think Benfica probably are the strongest, but it wouldn't surprise me if we, if, you know, basically any one of them could get second. So I think the second spot's definitely up for grabs in that group. Uh, at, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Christian. I, I think if you look at the, like Benfica, notoriously like decent at home in terms of keeping clean sheets and CSK Moscow do score goals. So, I mean, that, that could be an interesting game when they play each other, but, I just, I just think Man United look like score against anyone, absolutely anyone. Uh, I, yeah, the other three teams. I mean, it's anyone's guess in my opinion. I think with Mourinho as well, he's very good. Uh, you know, like going away to some of those places. You know, going to Moscow away. I think he'll know just how to set up his team and go there and you know, you know, probably take a point or you know, nip a one nil. One nil win there, so yeah, I I don't think they'll have any problems. I think he's a good manager when it comes to, you know, managing specific games. So yeah, I think regardless, I think that'll be all right. So yeah, he wins his cup finals, doesn't he? And I mean, yeah. it's a whole second season for Mourinho, so yeah. I don't know whether that'll play a factor. <laughs> I think it, I think you're right though. He, he just he has these big games where he completely changes the uh, the setup of the team almost, like maybe same formation, but. The way they play can completely change just just for a final game. So I think if anything, he's going to be if if they're struggling towards the end of the group phase, which I highly doubt. Then, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve. Ashley Young up front, <laughs> <laughs> and Fellaini, Maro Fellaini, and Ashley Young up front. But well, don't knock Fellaini up front, mate. Do not, don't don't write him off. He's yeah, he's well, like an Andy Carroll that can actually uh, stay fit. Again, there's another option that they've got if they need, you know, someone big and strong up there. Although obviously they've got Luke Hanka now, haven't they? So. 
I don't know if we're just jumping on the Man United train too much, but I'm calling you guys right out on saying Flaney will be great up front. If he's up front, I promise he won't score a goal. I'm making that, I meant, I'm making I that meant right Sam now. Both I meant sat behind the front for long balls. <laughs> right. I think if they, if they get Villa away in, in one of the cups, I mean, who are you going to put up against Chris Samba? It's going to be Fellaini, isn't it? <laughs> right, one last question, guys. So I'm going to go around now. Do, do you reckon Man United can win the Champions League? No chance. Based on the start of this season, yes. Gut feeling, probably not. No, no I don't think they've been tested enough yet as a squad. Um, I think they're building something and they still need to build in the next few seasons to be able to challenge the likes of Real Madrid, etc. Yeah. Louis? So, uh, Man U, no, I don't, I don't think they can win it. I think they can get to the semi-finals, but looking at the other teams out there, the likes of Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, PSG's, uh, Barcelona's, I think they're going to be looking at winning the Champions League because I think when we get onto the other groups, some of them have made the, the priority this year, where I think for Mourinho, it's winning that Premier League again. Um, but I think, yeah, definitely looking at maybe the semi-finals, but I, I don't think they'll win it this year. Okay, well, that, yeah, that'll bring us on nicely to... Uh... To Group B because we've definitely got a couple of potential Champions League winners in that group um, with Bayern Munich, PSG, and then obviously the other two teams, Celtic and Anderlecht. Sports on. You can the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so for me, I, I think the winner of this group is going to be PSG. Um, I, I'm watching them in, obviously in the first couple of games. I know it's the French league, but they've got the Neymar effect. I think it's given them club a massive buzz. Uh, they've got Verratti in as well, uh, as in they've kept him. They stopped Barcelona from signing him. Uh, Mbappe is incoming within the next day or two as well. Um, they just look far too strong. Um, I think they they be they may win it this year. Um, I think that's probably their priority, maybe over the winning the league, since they've been bought outright. That's what the owners want. They want Champions League, the Champions League trophy, um, and I think they'll go very very close this year uh, with Bayern Munich. Lewandowski is still one of, if not the best striker in the world. Um, and they've got the ever young Robin and Ribery on either flank. Um, it just is it's credit to them that they, they've sold uh, Douglas Costa this year and kept him Robin and Ribery. Um, Celtic under Rodgers, they obviously quite enjoyable to watch. Uh, Rodgers has got them playing some decent football, uh, but I think they are going to finish third this year uh, in terms of the group. Uh, so PSG for top, Munich for second, Celtic third, and Anderlecht fourth. Do we? Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, like for you guys, do you do you think it would actually be good for Celtic to maybe get Europa League, and maybe that's a better standard of football for them? I mean, no disrespect to Celtic, but obviously, I can't see past Bayern Munich and PSG getting through, but I definitely can see Celtic going into Europa League. So that'd be good for them. Do you think? I think, I think yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I think looking at the group after the draw, I think realistically that's what they're going to be aiming for. They're going to be aiming to finish the. Personally, I think I think they'll be spot on with Bayern Munich, PSG be the ones to, to to easily get out of the group. I mean, so obviously as Brendan Rodgers like say, fresh 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 air maybe, but um, they're basically they're, they're the same. They're still Celtic. You know what I mean, they're not gonna they're not gonna be walking. Uh, they're not gonna be sort of going to PSG or going to Bayern away and cause them trouble. They had the one game, what, a couple of seasons ago when they beat Barcelona. Um, you know, that's, that's a once-in-a-decade once kind of result for them. You know, as much as, much as it happens and they've walked the Scottish League without getting, getting beaten, it's, it's, still, it's still PSG and Bayern. They're, they're never going to cause them problems, in my opinion. I think the PSG will get their whole bag now will be to, to win the Champions League. But at the same time, if, that, if they sacrifice another French League, Monaco building on that, it's just again, it's putting them second place in the draw, um, in the second pot. So they, they're going to be the ones they want to be coming out top. They don't want to be ending up with, um, you know, if you look at some of the other groups with like Chelsea and Atletico, you know, they want to be one of those teams. They, they would want to be one of the, the teams that are at the top of the group, regardless. So I think they, they want to be winning the league consistently and then the Champions League on top. I don't think they think anyone would sacrifice a league, t- league title for. Champions League, but I don't think they'll, they'll push it to the back of the mind like Louis suggested. I think Neymar is probably going to be the deciding factor there. 
But at the same time, last season, they conceded, what, six goals in a very short space of time. So they only got into the, the knockout round. Bit of a freak result. But, you know, you're still going to need that solid defence, regardless of who you're paying, in my opinion. But yeah, PSC and Bayern took to walk it. From the point of view of Celtic again in the Europa League, that's a sort of trophy that not realistically they could win because it depends who drops out of the um, the Champions League and, and how seriously they take it. Uh, but obviously teams like Arsenal in the Europa League, their whole point now after looking what Chelsea did and Liverpool get into the did Liverpool get to the semis in the end, it was, wasn't it? They got to the final, didn't they? They got to the final, sorry, and they lost to Sevilla, was it? Yeah. Um, and and Chelsea winning it when they dropped out of the the Champions League. You know, Arsenal really this season want to be looking at okay, we need to be winning the Europa League. <laughs> the way they've started the season doesn't look like they'll be pushing for top four again. So, uh, well, I mean, they, really need to be, uh, they really need to be looking at winning the Europa League. So, you know, Celtic, in my opinion, not going to get anywhere near them. But if they play for a third place in the group um, and then get into the Europa League, then they can really push. They can really cause some, some teams some problems, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a fair point. Do you guys... I think there's a very small outside chance that maybe when teams go to the Celtic ground, they can maybe nick nick a draw. It's an intimidating ground for I don't know Bayern and PSG to go to, and so it can perform on the day. You mentioned about Barcelona. I think they beat Man City last season when I think they'd crushed everybody. I don't think they'd lost a game under Pep. Um, and then I think it was the Celtic game, and then they drew or they lost. Yeah, and I think then, three three. Yeah, it was good. that's true, yeah, because they did. They played very well for Celtic. And again, a bit like Liverpool on the Champions League night, I think the atmosphere is what what they kind of rely on to them. Like maybe they've not got in quality they make up for, you know, in, in atmosphere. And obviously they've, they've had some good European nights. So I think if you stick Scott Bryan on Neymar and stick Scott Bryan on yeah. Lewandowski, maybe, just, just have him... <laughs> Sacrifice we, for whatever game's next. I'll be chucking money on a booking. <laughs> <laughs> Throw money at a booking. And, uh, but I think, I, think, um, I think looking at PSG now, with, with Neymar, with, with, if they do get Mbappe, and Cavani's still class. I mean, he's taken a back seat in the headlines. But, um, you know, they've still got a very, very strong side. And Bayern are just clinical, aren't they, pretty much? They only really struggle when they get against the big sides. And did they go? To, I think they went out to Juventus last season, was it? I think um, it was, yeah. And I mean, obviously, Juventus last season looked absolutely incredible. They hardly conceded a goal, let alone lost one. So, um, yeah, I think that Bayern will be wanting to, to get back to the, to the, the top headlines of um, sort of semis and, and final. They're not really going to settle for anything less, especially when like Red Bull likes have, have come into the German league and caused them a bit of trouble. And obviously, they walked the. They walk the league in the end as they always do, but you've got a team there that's, you know, spending a lot of money and, and going to start pushing in Germany. So I think that they need to, you know, put their put their name on the big stage again. Yeah, yeah. I think just just quickly going back to my point about um, PSG and the priority of the league and the Champions League. I think it's more. So Monaco obviously won the league last year, but PSG have proved in the past they've got the squad capable of winning that league. Whereas in the Champions League they've fallen short. So I mean the likes of signing Neymar and Mbappe. And a few others this year. That's why I think that they're going to push even further in the Champions League. Sure. Nice. Okay, well, let's move on to Group C. Uh, I will obviously start this off mid-out being a Chelsea fan. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious with Atletico, Roma and Carabag in there. Carabag, the sort of unknown quantity from Azerbaijan. I think it's probably going to be between ourselves and Atletico, I think, going for that top spot. Um, I don't think Roma, after the sort of sales of Salah and like Rudiger to obviously us. Um, they're not as good. I think they got beat at the weekend by Inter Milan at home fairly easily. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be, I think it'll be close. It, it kind of depends with Atletico. They are, they are good. So yeah, it'll be close. I don't know what you guys think, maybe from a more neutral point of view. Yeah. So I think you're pretty much spot on with that. I mean, Roma, you, Roma, you, can't, you can't sleep on Roma. Um, they've got some. They've still got some great players, and then going forward, they can score a lot of goals. But yeah. they're not quite in the same league as as Chelsea and Atletico. I mean, except unless you mean the Champions League, because they definitely are. But uh, between the top two, I Chelsea, I think on paper should take it. It's interesting with the whole Costa situation. 
But um, yeah, I think that will be interesting if he's there. He's on the opposing opposing team. <laughs> um, I've just checked the fixtures because I love a fixture check. And you guys are playing Carabag on the twenty second of November. All that really doesn't make much of a difference. You've got West Brom away. I mean, you know, big scary stuff. But the game on the next Saturday, the twenty fifth of November, just a few days later, was Liverpool. As well, I think I think um, the point there, though, Shane. You say West Brom away. That's a very physical game. Tough game, yeah. Yeah, I mean, West Brom away is always a tough game, but it's a Tony Pulis side, a really, really physical game. So actually, that's that's what you want to worry about because you want to have the legs to challenge Liverpool the week after because Liverpool just run riot, as we saw on Sunday against Arsenal. They just yes, they're just so fast in attack that they, you can't you can't let up on them. And West Brom away, that's you know a team that now seems to play four centre backs. Um, across the back four did a lot of last season I appreciate they played a couple of wing backs on the weekend but that's a physical game of really pushing against a really tight defence trying to break them down you could see Chelsea being really really knackered I don't think they'll have, have a problem against Carabag but they might have to feel the weak inside um, in order to, yeah. to, to really be able to uh, push against Liverpool but then at the same time is that not a is that not the last game in the group stage it is no, because they've got to play Atletico is the very last game in the group stage. Okay, at home as well. You need to determine the the winner of the group. Yeah, big game. Yeah, in. yeah. yeah. so back, actually, so yeah, so I mean, it it depends really if they beat if because Atletico is going to be away, right? No, it's at home. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's, it's a tough one to say, but I think that um, yeah, I think the physical game against West Brom could cause a problem. And then, I mean, this is all just complete conjecture, but she maybe drop points to Carabag and then Roma might not drop points. And then it would really make it all down to the last game against Atletico, whether Chelsea would finish third, in theory, because then Roma will have Carabag at home, which you would assume is three points. But if Chelsea did drop points because they've got this, these pressure games in the Premier League, that, would, um, <laughs> that could cause trouble. It, it'll be interesting, I think, to see this season how Conte does in managing, you know, Chelsea having European football as well. Like you say, with those, the West Brom game and then Liverpool either side of a trip to Azerbaijan, it's going to be a whole different sort of thing when it comes to sort of pre- preparing the team and training and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it will be, he'll, he'll be tested this season when it comes to managing his squad. So, I- and, um, I remember because I'm a Spurs fan. Uh, we played Carabag in the uh, UEFA, in the Europa League. Sorry, yeah. uh, I think it was last season. And when we went there, they looked like compact. They looked like a good team. I think they walked the Azerbaijan League. Um, we only beat them one nil at their grounds, and I'm pretty sure it was like a really close game. Really write them off if you're going to go away there. It's going to be intimidating to say the least. I think you know. I think they'll be good. I think they're they're due their place in that you know, in that group, so. I think, I, I mean, if I can make a point about Atletico being, you know, a really strong side, but at the same time with their transfer embargo, they essentially, um, well, the transfer ban, like they, they haven't signed anyone. They've let, to the Theo Hernandez go, um, whether, so I assume they've not been able to strengthen in that department. They've got Philippe Luis, but, you know, if they get a few injuries, you know, they could they could be filled in a pretty weak inside, especially if they're struggling in the league as well. Um, so I think you know later on in the in the groups when they if they like the Roma game and the final Chelsea game, they're going to be uh, so their last two games for Atletico um, are going to be Chelsea away and Roma at home. But I just feel that depend on how they got on with injuries, not not being able to strengthen during the summer. Um, and Roma, yeah, they have let a couple of people go. But if Chelsea can keep keep up their uh, their form, because obviously you know they have a nightmare against Burnley, but then they look quite comfortable in the the next few two games. So yeah, Atletico could struggle. I can't see Carabag getting anywhere. They're just in it for the fun of it. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with that. Is it going to be a problem with Chelsea's potential lack of depth? Are, are we saying they've got a lack of depth in their squad over the summer? They haven't. Like as of this recording, they haven't signed a potentially a multitude of players, and they've let a lot more go than they've let in. When they've you got, got West Brom, team. you got like the West Brom game, the Carabao game, and then the Liverpool game. Are they going to have enough players to even field 
a relatively different squad? Are they going to have to use mostly the same players? Well, they got Willy Caballero, aren't they? True, sure. That's pretty much game one then. <laughs> I think it'll all depend on what happens in the next couple of days before the. the well, Ox, Ox deals agreed, isn't it? According to Sky Sports. So. But fees agreed. Another... And he's rejecting 180 grand at Arsenal, so he's going to be signing for Chelsea. Yeah, <laughs> unless somehow he fails a medical, let's be fair. Yeah, it's been a cracking day for me. <laughs> well, to be fair, if he plays anything like he played against Liverpool, he might fail the medical. <laughs> yeah. Um, just going back to Bates' chat about the transfer ban. Yeah. What do you want to know about? Yeah. Right. Yes, no, so sorry. <laughs> uh, so the transfer policy, I don't really, is, is that going to play too much for Parks? Although they haven't strengthened, they've pretty much got the core of the squad that they had last year. Um, and if they do get through the group, they can then re strengthen in January. Because um, they've signed for Tolo, who's gone out on loan for the first six months. Um, so he's available to play in January. So if they get through the group, they'll have him. I think it was um, more of a, if they get any sort of injuries, it could really screw them over because they've not, they've not been able to strengthen the depth of it. So they're just relying on youth players and players that they let on loan the season before. So I think that that's where they've not been able to add to the, the depth of the squad. Okay. I, th- I think they've got enough to get through. I think they, they're going to come second. I think Chelsea are going to top the group. Um, obviously, the first season back in it. Going back to their squad, um, obviously, they've got a few players in, but then they showed against, I think, Spurs last week that even with losing a few players, they've still got a bit of depth in that squad. Um, and I think Roma, the biggest losses for them is obviously Totti retiring um, and Spalletti is obviously gone to Inter Milan, who beat them on the weekend. Um, so although they have strength in their squad, I think those two losses in the change room are going to play a big part for them this year. Um, and then Carabag are a bit of an unknown quantity. I don't know a lot about them. I went through their player list and the only one I recognised was Michel. And he played for Birmingham in the 2010-2011 season. <laughs> nine, nine appearances. That is stats. Uh, big yes. player. I think the style of football of Chelsea and Atletico being sort of a more pressing, more attacking minded. Yeah. I think that's just the real, it's like ingrained in me to just assume that the Italian league is just this really sort of sauntering, slow paced football based on the fact that Perlo can just walk into any team and control game. But, um, and Totti's still scoring goals at the age of like 48. But uh, I think it's mainly just to do with the fact that, you know, Chelsea and Atletico have, you know, Chelsea have had a mare this last season, or the season before, sorry, in terms of their, their league position, but they just look a bit revolutionised under uh, under Conte, and Conte will have had years of knowing what Roma are all about, different manager and different bits. But you know, he'll know the core of the club and the way they play, so he should should be able to should be able to do something. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on to another tasty looking group, group B, which is Barcelona, Juve, Olympiacos, and Sport in Lisbon. So, obviously, two big guns in there. Who do we think is going to come out on top out of, let's be honest, Barcelona and Juventus? Um, I, I think Barcelona are going to top the group. Obviously, they've had the loss of Neymar. They've got Dembele in coming. They've got Spurs legend Paulinho. Uh, and I think they're going to do a bit more in the transfer market before it ends. I think looking at Juve, they're obviously still a great side, but was last season their season in the Champions League? Obviously, the loss of Benucci at centre-half is going to be massive for them. Um, they've managed to keep hold of Dybala, who's an incredible player. And obviously, going to the best striker in Serie A. But just looking at it, I don't know if last year was their year. I don't know if they're going to do as well as they did last year. Yeah, so, can they almost top that? The yeah. One, the final last year, that's the thing. So for me, I'm looking at Barcelona top in the group. And then Juve second, Sporting third, and Olympiacos fourth. Uh, if any of you guys got any more input on that. I pretty much agree with what you're saying there, Louis. I think it's going to be a really underwhelming group. Because I, I think you're right. I don't think Juve are going to be the same this season unless unless something big happens. Because it seemed like everything's just sort of clicked for them in, through the entire Champions League. I, I might be remembering this one, but I think we mentioned it before. They didn't let in a goal until, I think, the Monaco game. I think they let in one goal, I think. That was the semi-finals. Um, but, yeah, I, I think they've, they've kind of peaked with that. And Barca at the moment are just in complete turmoil so I think this is going to be quite an underwhelming group I still don't think Olympiacos and Sporting are going to come near them but if if they had a better maybe third seed fourth seed team like for example Celtic I think maybe Celtic could have done a lot better in this group even on paper they should still get demolished than they are than their current group in group B yeah I don't I think I agree with you like it'll be interesting to see how Barcelona do because 
you know, a few new players, obviously Neymar's gone and stuff like that. Um, and obviously they're not, you know, they almost seem to be clear second to, you know, Madrid, Real Madrid in, in Spain now. And then Juventus obviously with Benucci going, sort of disrupting that, that sort of in, almost impenetrable back three. It'd be kind of, you can see how, if they are up to kind of the sort of high standards that they've set for themselves over the last couple of years, I think so. Am I not right in saying, though, that they've got Daniel Rigani, who's essentially sat on the bench for them for the last season? Yeah. Um, coming in to replace... He's going to be playing playing every game, I assume, to, to replace Panucci. It's a bit of a strange one to let him go. But um, they obviously, you know, it's down to, I suppose, down to the manager. You know, I don't, I don't know really how much money it was for, but Juventus have got a huge amount of money. So I think Rigani's that, that player who's, who's probably going to step in. Um, he obviously very very good players, and you'd think that with playing a back three, where you do get that little bit of freedom for certain players, that just one of them having that that bit of freedom is going to be good. Um, you know, so maybe let Regani have that if he's like the younger centre backs that we see. I think people like David Luiz and John Stones, where they they need that bit of freedom. Uh, playing in the back three might be good. So even if he's a little bit inexperienced, it might might help. I just think there seems to be, and there's a lot of talk around it, that the problems with Barcelona, when you've got someone like Iniesta saying that he's not sure what, you know, what it's going to be like when he gets to the end of his contract. Messi, they've let Messi get in. Is he in his, he's in his last 12 months now, isn't he? Yeah. Um, obviously, letting Neymar leave. They signed Dembele, who's, yeah, been absolutely fantastic for Dortmund. But look at, look at Pogba. Pogba had a poor season. You know, came in eight nine million pounds. Didn't have the best season last year. I mean, he was all right, but you know, he looks absolutely amazing this season already. Their belly might not slot straight in there, so you you really don't know. So I think Barcelona are not going to be an unknown quantity, but there seems to be a lot of stuff going on around the club that that could you know, lead to a bit of disruption. Um, whereas Juventus have got pretty much the same team. They lost Dani Alves there, who was incredible last season. I mean, he was on a bit of another level. Um, it's a shame they don't have him going up against Barcelona because I think that would um, that would really mix it up a bit in the group stage. I mean, Sport and Lisbon historically have been all right, sort of, but you know they've they've come back into it for the first time in quite a while from from what I can remember. And Olympiacos are just well, it's, it's powerhouse. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's just uh, you know that's that's what kind of happens when you get those teams coming in from. From Turkey and Greece, that they're just they might they might you know cause a problem, but it's not really Juventus or Barcelona. You can't see it happening. No, Sport probably just got to be happy to be there again, really. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think I I agree. I think we're all sort of unanimous in that. But yeah, it will be interesting. I think it will just be whoever who's going to finish top out of Barcelona and Juve. So we will see. yeah, I can see it. I can see it being Juve, but then you know Barcelona could easily turn it on at any time, can't they? Well, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at Group E now, which is uh, the group with Liverpool in. They've got uh, what you could say a fairly favourable draw, I'd say, with Maribor, Sevilla, and then Spartak Moscow in there. Um, well, they've not they've not been stitched up like Spurs, have yeah, they? I'm livid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this group looks like a Europa League group. Uh, I, I mean, Liverpool are just going to walk this. I I can't see any problems at all. Sevilla seem Sevilla say seem um on trend at the moment. Like they're not doing particularly well uh in their league as far as I can tell because they've lost me money recently on bets. That's good of them. So I just don't see Liverpool I mean although it is classic Liverpool so they could really just mess up and then go to the Europa League with Maribor maybe coming out the shot but I really don't see any other kind of thing other than Liverpool top. It's probably Seville seconds, Spark third, Maribel fourth. But what do you guys think? Well, I had a look at I had a look at the, the the Russian league essentially, just to see how that how the teams um sort of got on. And you look at Spark finished top as obviously that's why they're seeded uh, in in Group One. But they conceded twenty seven goals in the thirty games in the league, and then they had like a plus nineteen goal difference. And I think if you're playing teams like Liverpool who on the day, can you know they might concede a couple, but are going to score. Well, well they'll score four. Oh, right, right, well, if you look at, look, I mean, if you look at how they, how they played against Arsenal, they, they could have scored plenty more. All right, in the first half alone. So I think that 
if Liverpool turn it on and they, they keep the, the players fit, um, and it, either, as well as if they manage to hold on Coutinho or get in a, a decent replacement, then, you know, they could easily be putting, you know, three or four past, past you know, these groups and uh, these teams in each, each group game. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they may be getting the creative talents of Lamar. At least they uh, put a bid in. I mean, the big word has been that he's not for sale, but, I mean, Liverpool are trying, bless him. Yeah, it was a severe, solid side. What, they won Europa League two seasons running? Yeah, two seasons. Uh, yeah. And that now, obviously, this is the season that gets you into the gets you into the Champions League. Um, oh, no, they're, sorry, they've been in it both seasons, haven't they? From, so they must, have, they must have gone into the Champions League via... Through well, that league, through, through through the league, or was it through finishing third in the Champions League, and then winning it? I think it was through that league. Okay, well, I just I just think they seem like a solid side. Liverpool can score as many goals as they want by the look of it, and uh, obviously, you know, Marabora are not going to be uh, having the best of times. I think Spartak, even though they're Group One, I mean that just gives someone who's you know someone like Spurs or Liverpool. Or, or Celtic, someone who's, or, or even like a team like Roma, people that are, you know, hoping to get a Spartak in their group because they just think, regardless of them being in Group One, they should be easily, uh, should be easily beaten. I was watching the draw live, and both Liverpool and Spurs were in Pot Three, and Group E was one of the pots uh, groups that actually an English team could go into because of the way it works. Mm-hmm. And I was praying, and I was, I think I joined about eight religions just to pray to the gods. <laughs> Uh, and then it, I mean, really fell apart. But I'm sure we'll get to that later. Yeah, I mean, you look at if you look at the teams in pot two, um, you'd think that Sevilla and Porto be the only two that actually you would want. So Spartak and Shakhtar being the two top in it that you would want. So to yeah. be fair, Liverpool have got the best possible group, I think, from a uh, from point of view, apart from maybe you know what? I know I think it's pretty much by the by for Sevilla or. Or, uh, or Porto, maybe. So, yeah, I think Liverpool have got the, the best possible draw they could hope for, to be honest. Yeah, I think, they'll, I think they'll be pretty happy overall with that. I can't see too much. Again, I reckon Sevilla will be too good for Moscow and Maribor. Um, but, yeah, I think Liverpool will, you know, see what, they, see what Anfield is like on a, on a Champions League night, like the other week against Hoffenheim. You know, it, it's just incredible. So, I think, I think that's almost just going to G the team up they're, yeah. they're back on. Um, that's the thing. They they finished what second, second in the um, in the Europa League, so it wasn't guaranteed, and, and they picked Arsenal to fourth place. Yeah. So to to then qualify and, and be back in it, I mean, when when they lose that final against Sevilla, you know, you you're uh, you're panicking a little bit. Well, yeah. Anyway, another another English team who you would say has got an interesting group is Man City in Group F. So they've gone with the Dutch champions Feyenoord. Napoli, who obviously are tricky, tricky customers from Italy, and then obviously Shakhtar from Ukraine. Do do we see Man City having any problems with this group? Or I'll, I'll take this one, no chance. Or I mean, Man City. It seems like the northern teams in England seem to have got quite favourable groups. I mean, the size of Man City and the amount they've strengthened in their defence. I mean, sure, it's still got gel, but it will do by this point. Napoli can can do well, but they're not going to trouble Man City, I don't think. And Shakhtar and Feyenoord aren't going to come close either. I don't see... Uh, I, I think Man City would be disappointed if they don't get maximum points here. I think you... I think you... Uh, I think you're, <laughs> you've been a bit harsh on Napoli there. <laughs> Napoli, a quality side. I think they've got goals. They've got a lot of goals in them, Napoli and Man City, regardless of strength of their defence. They, they're not... Um, but they still look like the tights at the back. I appreciate they've got a lot of new defenders, so it's going to take them a little while to, to gel. But I mean, Napoli can cause anyone problems on their day. I think Napoli, being the experienced side out of the group in the Champions League, that they would be the ones that would go away to Feyenoord and Shakhtar and be comfortable and, and win. Um, Man City have generally been like notoriously poor in the pro, in the Champions League. They've got Pep now, so that that could all change. But again, last season they didn't look um, didn't look too special. I think Gabriel Jesus is going to be excellent, regardless. So I think that's what they've lacked is a a second top striker. Um, you know, they got in Bonnie and that didn't really work. And Jeco was always decent, but I think really it's the 
um, the, the second striker, not relying so much on Aguero that, that's really going to going to help them out. But you know, I, I genuinely could see either Napoli or Man City winning this uh, this group quite easily. But I don't think there'll be a, a question about the two of them, you know, getting through the group stages. Yeah, for for me, I think it's either either one, either Man City or uh, Napoli. Obviously, Napoli, I, I enjoy watching them with the likes of Mertens and um, Insigne. Is that you say? Um, going forward, they're excellent to watch. Uh, but I think with Man City, sort of think Pep needs this. He sort of wants it this year. Man City are a club similar to the likes of PSG, where I think that they they're desperate for that Champions League trophy. Obviously, can Pep, I, Pep had a few. Can I, can I just chip in? Sorry, just one thing because you guys might all want to want to make a point of it, what I found out about Napoli, they lost the least amount of games in Serie A last season with four. Juve lost five, Roma lost seven and they still have the best goal difference. Yeah, so you start, that says it all. There's definitely going to be a lot of goals in this group, I think, uh, especially between Man City and Napoli as well. You've got to think fire and order managed by Arsenal legend Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, uh, but I don't think that's going to help them. I think they're still going to finish third, qualify for Europa League uh, but Man City and Napoli to fight out but I think Pep has built a squad he, he feels that's going to be capable of challenge for, challenging for the Champions League um, although we've seen some uh, frailties in the defence in the Premier League so far I think in the Champions League again he, he's got a squad that's definitely capable of challenging I think Yeah, I actually think Shakhtar could be a little bit harder than maybe first perceived just because I think going somewhere like Ukraine I think it can be quite intimidating and I think they they've been fairly tough, you know, opponents in the past. But I'm not not suggesting that they they will probably be coming second. But I think I think there'll be a sticky kind of place to go for certainly Man City and Napoli, who you would expect to get through. But um, yeah, no, I I still kind of agree with what you guys have said already that I think Man City should should be more than okay in this group. I mean, Shakhtar didn't didn't lose for like 23 games in the league last season. Yeah. Uh, they only lost two overall, and that was in the last 12 when it was the, the championship round, as they call it, within the Ukrainian league, as I learned very recently. Um, but also, Feyenoord were one point off Ajax in the Dutch league and, and averaged two and a half goals per game, pretty much. So, with Man City's previously leaky defence, and Napoli being clearly strong in Serie A and, and always been you know a tough team in the, in the Champions League, I think... Man City are going to have the work out a little bit. Yeah, could be interesting. So, anyway, uh, UA for Champions League Group G. Uh, this is one where it's kind of a interesting group in it for a few reasons. Not no standout teams, you would say. Obviously, you've got Monaco, French champions in there, along with Besiktas, Porto, and uh, RB Leipzig, who obviously did very well last season in their debut Bundesliga season. Um, thoughts on this one? There's, um, I think Monaco are still capable of winning the group. I think last season in the Champions League, what it did was put a lot of their players on show. Um, and obviously, a, a lot of the big clubs have come in and signed those players this year. So, they've they've managed to get in some reinforcements, although they've lost a few players. Um, obviously, they had two fantastic games against Man City last year and were a joy to watch, I think, for most. Um, but losing Mbappe is going to be huge for them. I saw today that they're going to get in Jovetic to replace Mbappe. Um, although he wasn't very good from Man City, um, he still did okay for Sevilla. He's got a decent, a quite decent scoring record. Um, so, but for me, I think Monaco are going to win the group. Um, with regards to second, I think the Siktas, um, they've they've managed to get a few players in, the likes of Pepe and Gary Medel. And if their uh, if their transfer announcements, uh, well, if, sorry, if their Champions League style is en- enjoyable as their transfer announcements, then yeah, they're going to be a joy. <laughs> they're very very good I'm coming to you but that. yeah what about um, what about RB Leipzig what do we think because they did well last year I think it's so the announcement today was that Cater's going to Liverpool but they've managed to keep him for another year which I think would be huge for them um, I got to see him play in pre-season and he is a very very good player very good sort of holding midfielder midfielder but again does a little bit of the box to box so winning the ball and laying it off similar to like the Kante role or Makalele role um, I think it's huge for them keeping him for another year. But yeah, I, th- I think they're going to challenge. Maybe it'd be out of Besiktas and Leipzig to come uh, second. Um, and I think Porto, uh, again, all the teams are on a pretty even le- uh, playing field, but I think Porto are going to finish last in the group. Yeah. 
could be could be quite close. I think. I think any one of those probably three other teams could quite easily finish second, or they could finish bottom in the group. It's it's one of those. It's it's kind of intriguing in a way because there's no real standout teams. So I think there's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think yeah, yeah. there'll be there'll be there'll be some games in that that will be for all. <laughs> I think you'll have some pretty crazy games because Leipzig. I assume are in the third, the fourth pot on the basis that they've never been in the Champions League before. That, so, like the the coefficient rankings, I think it is that that determines it a little bit. Um, that's why you have got to feel a bit sorry for Spurs. Um, <laughs> this is partly based on their history in the competition. I think uh, along with um, you know their yeah, that's right. Their position. I mean, they finished above Dortmund last season. They at one point were three one up against Bayern Munich away, I think, and then Munich came back and won four three. Or I'm not sure if that was away. Oh uh, yeah, I do. Um, some good signings. Porto, obviously notoriously the decent side, but only decent. You know, they 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 do well to be in the in the second pot. But I I really think that's a, that's the group that's going to be anyone's game, anyone's game, and and just a lot of fun. Yeah, I think based on last year's performance, a lot of people just looking in are going to think Monaco are going to rinse it, but with so many people, so many of their stars kind of going out now. I mean, are they going to be the same sort of team? I mean, they've, they've been known to go up and down a lot. I mean, was it a few seasons ago they absolutely destroyed uh, Arsenal and then they were down in the Europa League? And I think Tottenham played them like last season or season before and they looked just okay. Like, um, like I think we d- we demolished them as well. And then they beat us. And like, yeah, they're really kind of an up and down team. And now they've, like we said before, put their players in a shot window. And they've got rid of pretty much all of them, and maybe Lamar leaving as well. What's that leaving with Falcao, Glick? He kind of their stars. Yeah, not not much left to be fair after the, the flash sale that they're having at the moment. So I think their team's been pillaged a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. And obviously, you know, Besiktas have given the. I think they've given Arsenal problems in the past as well, to be honest. So. Yeah. I think I think I think if you look at any of these teams in the competition, Arsenal would uh, struggle at them the way they're going at the moment. Oh, for God's sake, grow up! <laughs> <laughs> but um, Let's you know that's, that's coming from a Toon fan, so yeah, we'll we'll move on to um, Arsenal's rival Spurs. Uh, Spurs. Shane will probably say save the best till last. So others will probably disagree. Probably um, but this, <laughs> uh, this is a tough group, Shane. This this group H. So Spurs are obviously with reigning champions Real Madrid, who've won it back to back. First team to do that with the new format. Never heard of them. Borussia Dortmund, who were uh, obviously very strong in in Germany, and then Apoel Nicosia, a little old Apoel from Cyprus, who I can tell you, I remember going to a Champions League game when they played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, and they drew two all. So I don't know, <laughs> too bad actually. How long ago was that? That was probably like six, seven years ago. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so as the resident Spurs fan, I am not that excited, but I'm, I'm more excited to, to see some really good football. I think this group's got a lot of potential to see some beautiful football being played. Uh, I mean, Dortmund and Real Madrid definitely have a unique style, and Tottenham are trying to get something similar. Dortmund are kind of on the... Well, no, it's kind of hard to say on the way down, but they're not quite the powerhouse they once were, I think it's fair to say. Um, I mean, they're still very much Champions League, but I, I, Tottenham may be able to scrape maybe a draw at theirs. And then, I mean, we'll go to Wembley and then we'll lose. But I mean, you'd maybe fancy us there. But yeah, Real Madrid are going to demolish it. It'll be nice to see Bale and Modric again, though. Do you, do you think the Spurs, obviously with the, how their sort of record at Wembley is from last season and so far this, that actually it might be better for them when they go away to sort of even Real Madrid and Dortmund that actually they'd be like oh here we go we'll just have a go here and they can express themselves and actually that might work well for them they don't have the pressure of Wembley I mean potentially I think by that point we would really hope that the whole Wembley thing would be behind us I don't think there's necessarily too much of a big thing about Wembley I think other people have said it before but you know Spurs are playing really good teams at Wembley that's why the record I mean we're just not good in finals and semi-finals I guess but it's not like we've had we've played you know Stoke every week and lost just playing really good teams there but they're, they're, I mean it's gonna by this point I mean the 13th of September I think is the first game we're Tottenham actually hosting Dortmund so by this point I mean I really would have hoped for our first win I think we've got whoever it is in the league oh god we've got like Everton I think so that might not be fun but um yeah 
you, I, I don't think the Wembley thing should play much of a factor. These guys are professionals. It's more of a media thing, in my opinion. The Spurs are away at Everton, so they don't have a, a league game at Wembley until they host Dortmund. Um, oh God, it's all over then. I think if you look at, I think if you look at their their games, really, um, well, again, I mean, basically, second game of the Champions League for Spurs is away at Nicosia. They might as well just get on the beach then. <laughs> and just gonna help us for a bit. I think just no point getting injuries against Dortmund and Real Madrid chasing the ball the whole time and doing hamstrings. Um, I, I, I think it's. I think they needed to beat Burnley. Um, they really needed to beat Burnley at home um, to just get that fear, sort of that weird, sort of this mental thing that they've got. Where it's hundred percent, they were playing in the new stadium, regardless of it being the, the Wembley. They were playing in a in a in a away stadium essentially when they're in the Champions League and expected to do a lot better. And then obviously they they've come they've lost the they lost last season against Chelsea in the in the semi final and then they've um, and then they've they've obviously lost to Chelsea in the league and now draw Burnley. So there's that sort of weird factor, but at the same time, Harry Kane hasn't scored in the Premier League in August. So he, he's sort of looking like he's doing nothing, but he does love an August European goal. So you never know. You never know. Never write him off. Yeah, it's, you know, it's true. Dortmund. Dortmund have lost Dembele. You know, they, they're, they're obviously a very good side still, but they did finish third in the league. Mm-hmm. And that might be to do with the, the power and the, 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 of the money of, of Red Bull Leipzig. But Tottenham are a solid side. They are a solid side. They've got their core. If Trippier's fit and playing well, obviously they rushed him back a little bit, but... If he's fit and playing well, um, I don't see him being any any sort of reduction on on Walker, if not probably better, especially for deliveries. Well, there's a lot um, of news at the moment about Aurea. Is it? Is that how you pronounce it? Aurea. Aurea. It's like it's Aurea. all been ag- agreed, and they're just waiting for the the court. So, do you think he'd be a uh, up over Trippier? A lot of people saying so. I just I just think it's it's a problem for. I, I think it's a weird one. I think Trippier they bought on the basis that. Um, he was going to be an understudy to Carl Walker a little bit. I think when he's played, he's played really, really well. And to sell Carl Walker for fifty million and have an immediate replacement of Kieran Trippier, I think is fantastic. I think it's a real, real shame if they bring in a foreign import and then play him ahead of Trippier, who should be challenging Klein and Walker. I mean, Klein, I think, I think he's better than Klein. Should be challenging them for the right back spot for for England. I think it'd be a real shame if if Trippier's Careers essentially hindered by them signing another right back, which I don't think they need, especially yeah. if Carl Walker Peters is going to be playing as well as he do. Um, you know, and, and as, when he plays, if he plays in the cups and then, um, you know, plays plays behind, you know, second fiddle to Trippier, I, I don't see a problem with that. I think it's only one game though, so you can't really say 100%. No, I mean, you're, you're sort of right. And Pochettino has come out and said, I think, I think a few seasons ago, that, that um, Trippier was the number one right back, but that was before all this obvious stuff was really too much of a factor. It's interesting to see how it's going to go forward. But maybe they're signing Aurea to be second fiddle to Kieran Trippier. Yeah, it's could be. They are, but you just think when when they're trying to strengthen their squad to, uh, and they essentially haven't really signed anyone. Gaza, well, don't forget Gaz and Eager. But um, they haven't really signed big. anyone. And, <laughs> and I think that they're just wanting these big signings. I think Tri- I think Aurea's probably going to be very good. But to be fair, he's, he's banned from the UK at the moment. So I'm not sure how they're going to get around that. But also, maybe they're signing them because it's a decent name that they can get in, and they do they have sort of right back, so maybe it's a good fit for people to get off their backs a little bit about signings. But if anything, I think the main reason they're struggling to sign anyone is because Harry Kane. I, I think, think they're not gonna they need a striker, but they're they're struggling to sign someone because everyone looks at Harry Kane and go, well, how am I ever gonna be ahead of him in the team? And then midfield is very strong. Hashtag Harry Winks. <laughs> Just go, going back to the the Dortmund squad. So obviously saying they're potentially not as strong. I think that obviously they've lost Dembele, but they looked they've addressed that situation straight away and they've signed uh, Yarmolenko. I think it was either today. That's or very today. true. Today. Yeah, so they've signed they've signed Yarmolenko. So they've addressed that straight away, and then they've also in the summer signed um, two of the young lads that won the uh, the under twenty one cup, uh, the European winners. So obviously they've come in from pre season on a high. I think both of them have fitted straight into the first team as well. They've still got Marco Royce at the moment. They've still got Aubameyang. 
Um, they've still got Kagawa, uh, Shirley. They have got a lot of top players. Um, I think it would be out of Spurs and Dortmund for second, but not just being an Arsenal fan, uh, fan I think Dortmund are going to pip them to it. And I think for Spurs, it's just see you in your Europa League <laughs> if we actually manage to get through the group. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I think yeah. Spurs need to, need to just go flat out attacking. I think they've got a strong defence. The way they played last season in the league, where they were the best season, they're the best team in the league last season. Uh, obviously, aside from Chelsea, but everyone loved watching them play. And I think if they can just give that, like in the in the Champions League, they can cause Dortmund problems. Yeah, you know, Dortmund finished third in the league. Spurs finished a comfortable second. Yeah, Ra- um, Real Madrid, obviously the best the best team in the world by probably quite a long shot. But you know, forget the Real Madrid games. Focus on beating Dortmund. Then I think um, you know Nicosia shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. You know potentially Spurs could be looking at what say six points against Nicosia, three against Dortmund, probably away rather than at Wembley. But um, you know if they can get ten points, which I think realistically they can, if you look at their their league performance last season, forgetting the Champions League and the fact that they're at Wembley, you know I think realistically Tottenham can get out of the group. I don't think Dortmund are as strong as they were a few years ago under Klopp. Uh, when Thomas Tuchel took over, they scored a lot of goals really quickly. Mm. But no one's no one's talking about Dortmund like like they were a few seasons ago. Whereas people are talking about Spurs or have been talking about Spurs, especially last season, as as a team that could really push on and, and do something. So I, I don't think write them off. I think they've just been completely stitched up. When if they had Liverpool's group, you wouldn't be looking past Spurs at all. I think Spurs have actually got to have decent chance. To be fair, I think like like what Bates has just said there. I don't think Dortmund are as good as they used to be. And I think probably on paper, I think Spurs have a good chance of getting back in. But we, we will see. They, if, they, if they play to their potential, then they'll get through. But obviously second to Madrid. So Anyway, so just as a, as a wrap-up, guys, I'm just going to ask who you think is going to win the Champions League and then maybe a standout team, a surprise package. So, Bates, who do you, who do you think is going to win it? Yeah. I think you, you can't really be looking past Real Madrid. Um, you know, they've won it the last two seasons running, but for a team to win it two times consecutively for the first time, they probably won't win it a third time because that would just be unbelievable. But if you look at all the teams on paper, you'd think they would be the, the best side. Surprise package, Spurs. I think we're all having a laugh at Spurs, but I think surprise package... Because I, I genuinely think they'll get out of the group second, and if they if they manage to um, they manage to get maybe a a Sevilla, a Benfica, a, you know maybe even a Roma or Porto like that kind of thing, they I think they have got potential to to do all right. I think people are writing them off a group stage, so they can potentially make it to the quarterfinals. Uh, Louis, uh, I, I yeah I can agree with uh, Bates on winners would be uh, Real Madrid, County past them at the moment, so I think they on the run to win a third cons- consecutive uh, Champions League title. Um, for a surprise package, I th- think I'm going to go with Monaco, just based on the fact that I think everyone's wrote them off because they've lost a lot of players. But I think from looking at them the, the other day, I think it was yesterday, they beat Marseille 6-1. Again, I know it's the French League, but I, I think they've still got a squad that's good enough. And if they, can get, if they can finish top of the group and then get a decent draw in the next round, I think, yeah, potentially we could be looking at them for the, the quarterfinals and you, you never know. Obviously, they, they went on to, what was it, semifinals last year? They got two? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think they're the surprise package for me. Uh, and Shane? Uh, I'm going to go winners. I think PSG, I think I really think they're going to do it this year. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, Real Madrid will be the favourites, but they can't win it three times in a row. It's not written. It can't <laughs> happen. So, it has to go. I like, And I think PSG... This season, uh, someone mentioned the Neymar factor earlier. I really think that's going to be a massive part with Mbappe as well. It's it's just going to be huge. They're just going to snowball out of control, I think. I mean, they're going to probably let in a few goals, but they're going to score so many more. It's going to be ridiculous. Uh, surprise package. I'm going to go Leipzig. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that right. I really think they're a big unknown quantity. They came second in the German League last year. They beat Dortmund, and we're all thinking Dortmund are a pretty good team. Um, I know, like Madrid ran away with it, but they still finished second in that league. That's that's still an achievement. There's like there's still some decent teams there. Uh, I think they could get out of that group, probably top, 
maybe top and then all they've got to do is get a semi easy second place i mean you're looking they could potentially be playing people like napoli uh seville uh yeah the for maybe atletico or chelsea i mean they could you, you can't rule them out so i think it's gonna be them yeah no, that'd be interesting i actually um similar with you i i actually think psg again for my winners as much as obviously it will be close between real madrid it wouldn't if the draw works out that way, I think that could be the final. Um, but yeah, I think because PSG of what they've done, who they're going to bring in, obviously with Mbappe, and I think just the squad they've got anyway is quite a balanced squad. Um, and then, yeah, probably going to surprise package. I was going to say Leipzig, but actually, just to mix it up a little bit, I think Liverpool actually being back in it. I think they've got good draw. They should get through the group easily. Uh, and just how they are, at home, I think they'll uh, they'll uh, definitely definitely be one to watch. Certainly, it depends if they they can get do it away from home. Um, but if they can do it at home, I, I think you know they'll almost smash teams like you know they smashed Real Madrid, albeit a few years ago, but you know like four 0 at Anfield. So um, they can replicate that again. I think they'll they'll do well. So I think I think you're right with what you're saying about Liverpool in terms of. If, if they can carry their form against big teams into the, the Champions League. Uh, so last season, they out of the, the, other, the other five teams in the top six, they, they won five and, and drew five. So unbeaten against the top six in probably the toughest toughest league in, in Europe. Um, and then if they can carry that into... And obviously, not forgetting, they absolutely dominated Arsenal, beating 4-0. Um, what, score, some, what score was it? I think it was 4-0 Liverpool against Arsenal. Okay. Um, I think then you're looking at you know, 4 0. Arsenal played on the weekend, um, didn't they? I think, I think they, well, I'm not sure Arsenal played, but they, they, were, they were involved in the game. Yeah, I don't think we definitely didn't turn out. So, um, I, think, I think you might be right, actually. Liverpool is probably a bit of oversight. I think, I think the reason I said Spurs is because people are writing them off. Um, whereas Liverpool, I think they just, um, you know, they could potentially comfortably finish top of their group. And then, uh, yeah, I think, I think you're right. They, they could. I think it's just when they play against the bigger teams. In Europe, they're they're gonna be um, they're gonna be getting getting found out defensively. I think that all the big teams in in uh, the Premier League have had problems defensively, apart from so much Chelsea last season. I think you know Man United were weren't, weren't the best. Um, they weren't losing games, but they weren't the best defensively. They got a bit stronger towards the end. Arsenal obviously very leaky defence at the moment, and and Spurs usually really strong defence, but. They just they're just not doing it at the moment, are they? So I think I think you might be right with Liverpool on that one. I might ch- I might change to Liverpool. <laughs> no, can't change. Can't change. Thursday. No back seats. No take back seats. <laughs> anyway, right, cool. Thank you very much, guys. So that's been the hangout sessions. Uh we've had our predictions on how we think the Champions League is gonna go. But uh if you're listening to this, do give us a like, uh comment how you think it's gonna go, uh and subscribe to the channel on YouTube. So um yeah, cheers again guys and uh Check out for more podcasts coming soon. Yes. Cheers, guys. Thanks.